Now, before we get to the panel, I want to bring in Turning Point USA reporter Savannah Hernandez. You know her well. She is in East Palestine, Ohio. Savannah, you were there when Pete Buttigieg finally showed up. Let's have a look at what happened when you tried to talk to the transportation secretary. Mayor Kate, why did it take right. you an entire right. two and a half weeks to actually get here to respond to East Palestine? Will you apologize to the residents of this city for for the, the, the slow response? Is she happening, happening here? here? And can we also ask too why it uh, you know he waited until President Donald Trump came here to actually make an appearance? This is a very important question that people you, across America I'm would like to I'm know. I'm happy to have a conversation with you. I do not want to be on camera. Uh, well, please put the cameras yeah. away. I'm sorry, we're on a public area, uh, so we She's are allowed as press. I, you guys, I would like you guys to turn your cameras off. Savannah, this is pretty bizarre stuff, both from Buttigieg and his press secretary. Talk us through what happened when you tried to question him. Sure. So I made sure to be there on the scene so I could ask the questions that the American people have had for weeks. OK, this isn't just about uh, a photo op. This isn't about, you know, going out and uh, Pete Buttigieg being here and caring about, uh, I guess, residents here. Uh, it, it's genuinely like he well, he is here for a photo op. That's what I meant to say. Sorry. It's been a very long day. I had to get a very early to go <laughs> catch up Buttigieg. Uh, but, but again, too, you know, it's just it was made me really sad to see his response, him running away from people, the fact that the residents of East Palestine have been left in the dark for the past three weeks, and then Buttigieg finally has the audacity to come the day after former President Donald Trump made his trip over. Uh, and then again, you know, he runs away from me. I waited outside, and, you know, he ended up coming back out, and I questioned him again. And when he came back out, it did seem like he was ready for questions, and he was uh, prepared on what to say. But initially, he had no response. His press secretary did not want to respond. They didn't want the cameras rolling, and they even tried to get one of the security guards to shut me down. Now, for the first time ever, local police actually said, hey, she is allowed to film here. The press secretary can walk away. But how bizarre is it that we have a... a political official, a leader of the United States of America, who is supposed to be at the forefront of fixing this issue, running away from the cameras, not only that, but trying to, uh, you know, shut down American citizens that are trying to ask questions. Now, Savannah, you were also there when President Trump came earlier and toured East Palestine. What was the feeling like among residents when he showed up? Contrast that with how they felt about this Johnny-come-lately Poot Buttigieg and as, as we said before, you know, coming after Trump and making himself look like he was forced into this and shamed into this by the former president. Sure. So um, one of the things that I want to say as well is this wasn't a political situation, right? It was very difficult for me to even find where Donald Trump was going to be at because he kept his location under lock and key because he didn't want big crowds. He didn't come so uh, you know, he could take his photo op so he could get all of the press attention. He came for the residents. He came to listen to the residents, to speak to the residents, to help the residents. Uh, meanwhile, you know, you had Pete Buttigieg who came the next day after. And the only reason why he was here was, again, because Donald Trump announced that he was going to be visiting. So yesterday, the energy was palpable. The people were so excited. The residents excited that somebody genuinely cared about them as Americans and was willing to come hear them out and just show them like, hey, you know, I'm going to be on the ground here. I saw what happened to you. And, uh, you know, we're going to bring some leadership here. We're going to bring some supplies and we're going to show you that you care. So the residents were very excited yesterday. They were chanting that Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg might as well not even come because, you know, they, they had their leader that actually cared about the American people on the ground. So the energy yesterday versus the energy today in the town, very different. It was pretty dead today. Uh, Pete Buttigieg, the only crowd that he attracted was the press gaggle that, again, he was hoping to, to, to be here on scene to show that he made his appearance in East Palestine. And, I mean, tell us, you've been in the town, you've been talking to people, presumably. We just had a package from uh, our correspondent, Annalise Nielsen, which showed the river still has lots of weird things coming up in it. It does not look at all safe or uncontaminated like a crystal clear, pristine Ohio River. Um, and yet we have people saying, oh, no, there's just been a lot of misinformation uh, out there uh, around this. What are people feeling like in the town? Do they feel like they're being gaslit by government officials? And why have government officials been so reluctant to engage on an environmental disaster, which you would think, you know, Democrats, the left, would really care about? 
Absolutely. Uh, residents here have been talking to me about how their businesses have been forced to close because of this disaster, about how their children are breaking out in hives and rashes, unable to breathe. I spoke to one woman today who said she's recovering from two-week chemical pneumonia that she has been fighting. So this is what is happening to the residents here on the ground. Uh, people unaware if they should stay, if they should go, if they need to move away from this uh, environment because of all of the toxic chemicals that have seeped into the air and uh, water. I was walking around yesterday, still very toxic smells of chemicals in the air, and it was raining, and I don't know if I'm being paranoid, but my skin was burning after the rain fell on me, and you could see a chemical sheen running down the gutters of the street on all of the vehicles that were parked outside. Uh, so it's still a very toxic environment. Residents are very concerned, and again, they're calling on the federal government for help because last week, um, FEMA funding was denied for this, this small town, and they feel completely abandoned. And I mean, you know, and people don't know what the long term consequences of this chemical exposure is going to be, even if, you know, it goes away next week. But President B Biden, meanwhile, has been criticized because he went to Ukraine, uh, you know, for the one year anniversary of Russia's invasion there instead of traveling to Ohio. What are your thoughts on that? And I mean, is there a broader sense in Ohio and in America that it's time for Biden to really take care of problems at home before he tries to sort out the world's problems? Well, you know, on a nationwide level, we're dealing with record high inflation. Um, being on the ground here in East Palestine, we're dealing with a toxic chemical disaster that has destroyed lives. The federal government's slow response, essentially sacrificing the lives of these people. And I woke up this morning, and one of the first things I saw from the Biden administration was that they were pledging another $10 billion to Ukraine. So it genuinely is a slap in the face to the American people. It's absolutely heartbreaking that they did not have the decency to come down here. And I truly do feel that the Biden administration has abandoned Americans and they, they put us last, let's be honest. And indeed, with Donald Trump making this trip here, he's not attacking Ron DeSantis, he's not attacking Nikki Haley. Um, is this a new phase in his campaign for, to regain the presidency where he starts fighting instead with the Biden administration? And do you think that this again puts him back ahead of the pack? Again, I don't even feel that this is a fight with the Biden administration. This is just a leader who cares about the American people showing up for them. I don't think that this was political at all, but I think that the American people will see very well who actually cares about them and who doesn't. So I'm not going to say that this is a Biden versus Trump thing. I really genuinely didn't feel uh, yesterday, you know, that this was a political ploy at all. The Biden administration keeps trying to say that Donald Trump is trying to play politics by coming here, and that's what he did. But no, they're trying to play politics, and that's why they were a day late and a dollar short.